It ain't the left side or the right side, then it must be the fin side. Inside. It ain't the left side or the right side. Thank you, Solo D. Welcome to another episode of On the Fin Side here with Kat and Paul Pickin. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, and on iHeartRadio. The Dolphins play the New York Jets in South Florida on Sunday. Uh, really could be a revenge game for the Dolphins. They were clobbered by the Jets 20-6 to in Week 2 in embarrassing fashion. And now it looks like the Dolphins and Jets are heading in two different directions. A little bit of injury news. It doesn't look like Devontae Parker will play. Mike Pouncey and Byron Maxwell not expected to play either. Not a big surprise there. Jake Brendel is going to – looks like he's going to replace Pouncey in this game. Andre Branch and Xavier Howard are questionable but should play. And on the Jets side, Muhammad Wilkerson, really the only big-name injury, but I'm not sure if that really matters at this point with how Wilkerson's been playing anyway. So, Paul, the, the Dolphins play the Jets on Sunday and then the Ravens on Thursday. So two big games and very winnable games here within five days, and then the schedule gets a little bit harder after that. It really does, but you know what? It's one game at a time. Yeah, the, the Ravens game definitely looks winnable on Thursday, but it is a short swing for these guys. For me, I definitely want Miami to 100% focus on the Jets, who, let's face it, we all looked at the Jets coming into the year. National pundits looked at the Jets coming into the year and said, these guys will be lucky to score 140 points. These guys will be lucky to win anything. And they've been kind of a surprise, uh, even to Jets fans at this point. I know talking to Jets fans outside the stadium before the previous Jets game, they were all like, yeah, yeah, we suck and we know it. Good luck to you guys. We hope you win because we want that number one overall pick. That The number one pick may already be out of reach given San Francisco and the Browns and how they're looking so far this year. And so Miami cannot overlook this game. This is a team that really a couple of botched calls last week could have beat the Patriots. And not only that, It'll be interesting to see what Miami is able to do against the Jets without Byron Maxwell choosing his own coverages. And instead, apparently Miami's best corner on the team, Cordrea Tankersley, surprised all, actually playing the coverages that are called. That, that could make a big difference in this game coming up. So there's a lot of different stuff to watch here in this one, a lot of good storylines. Yeah, I think the biggest difference between week week three and – and now for the Dolphins and the Jets is how, how the Dolphins defense has been playing over the last couple of weeks. Ever since Lawrence Timmons got in there at linebacker and Cordrea Tankersley to replace Byron Maxwell, I think it's been a completely different defense. It, you took really two big holes out of that, out of that D and, and everybody's been able to get more on the same page. And also the defensive backs have been able to clamp down a lot more on opposing receivers. Uh, that's why you've seen, the Dolphins pass D do a lot better uh, over the last two weeks, only two touchdowns allowed. So, but and the big thing too, is but, Josh McCown. Before yeah. we get to McCown though, I just want to jump in real quick because as harsh as we were to this guy on the show, I do have to give a little credit as far as, as the plug and plays that have changed since then. Fat ass Maluga. You know what? Keep pounding those big Macs, big boy, because he has been, a revelation at middle linebacker. I mean, he's not going on any Pro Bowls, but he has been absolutely solid. He's been getting more snaps than anybody could have anticipated and, and really has also helped solidify that linebacking core. What a difference with him in there. He, his pass coverage skills may not be as good as Mike Hall's, but Maluga has been better than I think any of us could have expected, especially given the fact that he was too fat to play for as long as he was. Uh, this season. So kudos, kudos to Maluk. I, I've got to give the man credit. Uh, I know we were pretty harsh on him a few weeks ago, and he he has surprised me as well. And him being in the lineup could be a big difference maker as far as the run game goes, because you're not going to gash Miami up the middle running past two defensive tackles to our third mobile defensive tackle at the linebacker. Yeah, and this is a game where Maluga should be playing a lot of snaps still because when you look at the jets and, and how they move the ball when they do move it, I mean, Josh, it's Josh McCown dumping the ball off and it's running the football with their three headed monster of Bilal Powell, Elijah McGuire and Matt Forte. There's not a big tight end. That's going to be streaking down the field 
you know, Austin Safarian Jenkins has been a good player for them since returning from injury, but 23 catches, 152 yards, what, seven yards a catch or so? I mean, I, so it's it should be a good matchup there for the Dolphins. But the matchup I really like on the defensive side of the ball is how deep the Dolphins are uh, on their defensive line. I mean, like I said last week, the Dolphins legitimately are eight deep on their defensive line. They can rotate players throughout the game. And in Miami this week, it's supposed to be in the mid-80s on Sunday. So because of that, if the Dolphins can effectively rotate those defensive linemen, get some heat on McCown, I think it could be a long day for the Jets' offense. Speaking of heat on McCown, don't discount the fact that Miami's playing at home where just freak of nature-wise, the way the stadium was built, the Dolphins will be sitting in the shade on the sideline at 1 o'clock. The Jets will be sitting there at the hottest part of the day with that heat beating down on their sideline all game. Don't discount the impact that that's going to have in this game because, let's face it, they've got some big boys on that sideline, and if they're running the ball a lot, they're going to be expending a lot of energy and sitting over in the heat repeatedly throughout the day. So that always plays a factor. And I won't say Tom set it up on purpose, wink, wink, but Tom set it up. (laughs) Good job, Tom. And good for him. Good for him for doing that. Yeah, and on the other side, it it becomes so important for the Dolphins to continue to pound away. Jay Ajayi, over the last two games, 200-plus yards in the last two games, uh, is starting to really get back on track. And the Jets on the defensive side of the ball, Six sacks in six games, none of which were by their defensive linemen. So the Dolphins against the run in the past should have an advantage there if the offensive line played like it did last week against the Falcons. I mean, Juwan James and Laramie Tunzel, not even a pressure allowed throughout the entire game against the Falcons team that is pretty good at getting to the quarterback. So if they can keep the heat off Jay Cutler, Maybe he's going to have a little bit more time to throw. Maybe he, he can build on that promise we started to see in the second half of last week's game. Speaking of the second half of last week's game, I, I do have a question for you. If you're Adam Gase and Jake Brendel starts this game, plays just as solidly as he did last week, and really they, the middle of the Dolphins offensive line all of a sudden is able to keep Jay Cutler clean in that pocket. Now, I know Mike Pouncey's a pro bowler. I know he is. And I can't believe that I'm saying this, even though, as, as you know, I, I, I was pointing at Jake Brendel when everybody else was didn't realize he was even on the roster as a guy that really could be that up-and-comer in the eventual heir apparent to Mike Pouncey. If they're able to play well in the middle of that line with Jake Brendel suddenly in the lineup like they did last week, what do you do when Pouncey gets healthy? I still think Pouncey starts and Brendel is the backup if it's for one game. Now, if we're talking about Pouncey's injury going two or three games and the offensive line is playing significantly better, then I think you've got a bigger sample size there to say maybe Brendel should start at center and Mike Pouncey should either either go away away or move to guard. But I I think Pouncey is viewed as as a team leader. Personally, I've, I've always felt he's overrated. But, yeah, now a conversation for another day is I think the misconception is that the Dolphins are going to be in salary cap hell after the year. Reality is if you cut Pouncey, Julius Thomas, and Byron Maxwell after the year, you're going to be about $32 million under the cap. So that's just that's a conversation for another day. But to answer your question, no, I think Pouncey starts unless there are multiple games he misses and Brendel just knocks it out of the park. It's definitely a curiosity. I'm with you. I do think Pouncey – reclaims his starting role, given the fact that he's a team leader, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it starts to get a lot harder the more plays that Brendel is out there and the way that not just it seems to impact the center position, but it seems to be impacting the guards on either side of them. I mean, Dolphins' best lineup may be, in a couple of weeks, potentially Pouncey at right guard, Brendel at center, and Anthony Steen at left guard which if you told me that before the season, I would have laughed and said, yeah, okay, Uh uh-huh, right, yeah, okay. So just a thought. There's something to to keep an eye on, I think, in the coming weeks. 
Yeah, and it's nice to see Juwan James and Laramie Tunzel playing so well on, on the outside. And now on the inside, I feel like Anthony Steen is starting to look like a starting quality guard. And if Jake Brendel can take that step up too and project a, as as your starting center in 2018, I know we're getting ahead of ourselves there, that would be huge for this line because you're not going to pay them a lot of money. And then maybe you can focus all your resources on that right guard position and upgrading Jermon Bushrod. So a lot of interesting things. We've, we've got off, off the rails just a little bit here, Paul. But So what do you think the Dolphins need to do to win this game? Yeah, before we get to our matchups and predictions, I did want to put out there really, really quick for folks. We've had a lot of people hit us up uh, throughout the years wanting to get like a T-shirt or something for the show. I know we've kind of bounced around the idea. We didn't want to put out anything crappy that wasn't quality stuff. I know we've ordered a handful of things ourselves to test this out. But the cool thing is this week we've actually got starting out a little bit of a merch store and we wanted to make sure that a good portion of this is going to go to Dolphin Steam Charities. We wanted to make sure it was quality stuff. We've ordered stuff ourselves. And if you want to check it out, head on over to onthefinside.threadless.com. It's, it's actually a hipster clothing store, but they've got some really cool stuff. And take a look. We're going to have the information to get to this down in our show notes. And, yeah, take a look. Let us know what you think. If you order a T-shirt, just keep in mind a good portion of it is going to go to charity. And we're, we're really excited about it because I know for me, the shirt that I ordered is like the most comfortable shirt I own, regardless of what logo's on it. So great stuff there. Take a peek, let us know. And uh, yeah, if there's anything you do want to see there, give us a shout on that as well. As far as the matchups that you were talking about and what the Dolphins need to do in this game, I think the biggest thing Miami can do here is we need to see Tankersley and we need to see Howard up on the ball, up on the receivers, knocking them off their routes. And we need to see the linebackers here continue to do what they've been doing in the past few weeks. Outside of that 20-yard and 40-yard run last week that they allowed, they shut down the running game. And they need to do that against this Jets team. If you can stop the running game for this Jets team, suddenly they're that team we all talked about in the preseason that can't score 140 points in a season. That is one of the biggest things that Miami has to do here. The defensive line will be able to get to McCown. They will. It's There's no question there. Cameron Wake is the best in the NFL at pressuring quarterbacks this season, and Miami should be able to do that. So if you can limit that running game like Miami's been doing, everything else falls into place for this team. As far as running the ball offensively, the Dolphins need to do that as well. They Jaya has struggled against the Jets, really in the last three games. I mean, last year he had 111 yards, but it really just because of two real long runs at the end of the game. Last time was a disaster, 11 carries for 16 yards. The Dolphins need to stick with the running game because of that hot weather and because of how thin the, the Jets are without Muhammad Wilkerson uh, on that defensive line. So I, I think once – if you get into the second and the third quarter in that Miami heat and you're pounding away, pounding away. I think some of those are going to start popping for you. So Paul, my prediction on this game is going to be, we're going to go with a low scoring game, very similar to the last game. I'm going to say the dolphins pulled this out 20 to 10 by running the ball. And they're going to get some heat on Josh McCown. Unlike last game when they, when they fell 20 to six. I think the offense is going to build off of what they did last week. So I'm in kind of the same neighborhood as you, but I think Miami's going to pull this one out 27 to 13. I think the Jets will score a couple of points, but I do think what I was saying before about the linebackers limiting the running game, et cetera, is, is something that's going to be a reality here. The fact that you're going to have your corners up pressing these receivers is huge against this team. McCown is not good enough if his receivers are getting knocked off their routes immediately. For me, I, I, I really think Miami's able to pull this one out and, and actually get a little bit of a big victory instead of one of these seven points or less victories that Miami's won, what, 11, 12 in a row of thus far? Yeah, for me, it's a big one, 27-13. Regardless of how the Dolphins win, they just need to win and do the same on Thursday. If they do that and, and they're at 5-2, and two, they set themselves up much better for the rest of the year. Because the schedule is tough. I mean, you've still got the Raiders, you got at, at Carolina, at KC, at Buffalo, Patriots twice. So after this Thursday here, the schedule really starts to get difficult. Dolphins can't be three and four, maybe not even four and three, heading into that 
stretch for the rest of the year. You can follow Paul and I on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, and on iHeartRadio. That'll do it for our Jets game preview. You can follow us here during the week as well when we give our grades on the Jets-Dolphins matchup. And we're going to be sure to get in quickly next week to preview the Dolphins-Ravens Thursday night game so that you have everything you need heading up into that matchup. And if it's not on the right side and it's not on the left side, it is on the fifth side. It ain't the left side or the right side. And it must be the fin side. side. It ain't the left side, left side. or the right, right side. side. And it must be uh, the fin side. Listen, Dolphins fans across the land all tuning in to see what we're